Hello recorders and Bleach fans, welcome back to my channel, I'm your host Steven. Now for you Bleach fans that are here to watch this panel who are not even subscribed to my channel, I have a confession to make. Despite me bringing you people this panel, I have never seen an episode of Bleach. I am not kidding, I have never seen this show. And you're probably thinking, like, what kind of anime do I watch? Well, I've seen this one. Allow me to explain my anime upbringing. Well, for me, I'm a 90s baby. Anime was only accessible through Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, and Kids WB, and renting VHS tapes at the library or Blockbuster. Now, when Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece were airing on Cartoon Network right around that time, I did not have cable. Like, I went through most of my pre-teens and my early teens without cable. Like, I missed out on Dragon Ball GT when it originally aired. Well, on a final note, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Well, enough about me, it's recording time! and I've always screamed you out. I'm Johnny Youngbosch. <laughs> and I voice Ichigo. I'm Johnny Youngbosch. No, I'm Michelle Ruff, and I voice Rookie at Kuchki. <laughs> I'm definitely not Johnny Youngbosch, but... I'm Brian Peacock and I play the human Chica. I'm Johnny Unba! <laughs> no, actually, I'm Neil Kaplan and I am. Genryu Sayamamoto! <laughs> I am Johnny Oldbosch. Alias Dan Warren, alias Byakuya Kuchiki. Not Johnny Young Boss. Jameson Price, Chad. I 
I'm Jimmy Young Bosch. I'm Johnny's twin brother. The resemblance is amazing, isn't it? Fantastic. Uh, Wally Wingard, I'm Renji Ibarra. I'm lieutenant in the 13th Court Guard Squad of the Soul Reapers. Here to kick your ass, Ichigo. Tell me to remake the names and put Johnny Boyanz and all of them. I did not expect that many Johnnies. Anybody got a pen? I can do that. You know, I'm gonna get you one just for that. Well, that let's would, go ahead. That would be a hilarious picture. Everybody jotting up. I'm, I'm gonna ask the question. I'm gonna go get a sharpie. Okay, please. That'd be all right. right. I'm gonna get the first one. I'm just gonna do an easy one. Everyone answer this question. How does someone start down the road of being a voice actor? That's not an easy question. <laughs> sure it is. Just be a TV star or a movie star. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> I know. He left us. Google is your friend. Now, I want to be a voice actor.com is a great, legit website. I want to be a voice actor.com, which will tell you, in a nutshell, to become an actor, first and foremost. Build that foundation, hone your skills, be the best actor. It's not about doing voices. Train, become an actor first, and then work with uh, voiceover coaches over Skype or Zoom. You can train with a lot of really cool, talented people with lots of experience, and uh, it doesn't come fast, cheap, or easy. It's, it's a hard life, but it's worth having if you put in the work, and maybe some cool things will happen. I also just wanted to bring you to, or, or to tell you about another website. It's called I want to be a voice actor.com. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but I, I can't recommend that website enough. It is just chock full of amazing information. If you if you do want to start down the path of this career, I want to be a voice actor.com is done by Dee Bradley Baker. Uh, just chock full of amazing, amazing information. I, I don't even know if anybody really has anything other to add to that. Not really. It's probably the same thing. Yeah. Just go check it out. It's, it's a complicated question, really, you know, uh, and, and we don't know you, we don't know where you are as an actor, if you're an actor, you know, there could be so many things, but that's a great place to start and probably answer most of your questions. You know? Yes, I did know that. That question was literally just for me to get to that Sharpie, so it was just to buy me some time. <laughs> and it did, because the Sharpie's going down the road, so. You did a yeoman's work, my friend. Yes, yes. But here's a fun one. Is it awkward to do the grunts, the yells, and other sounds that happen during the fight scenes? Not if you just recently ate a Taco Bell. <laughs> then it's very easy. Because it's mostly indigestion. Yes. I, I enjoy those, actually. I kind of, I like, uh, I like the action stuff. I, there's something, you know, there's, 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 we just chase them. I don't, you guys probably do the same thing. They just basically, which is they just play it and you just chase the action, you know? You just do what feels right in the moment or what you're seeing on screen. It's kind of like a game, you know? How, how close can you get to, you know, to not having to do it again? You know, can you nail it? <laughs> take? Go. Right, exactly. It's like, okay, I'm about to, to spill my, my lungs out. Can we make sure that you've got my levels correct so that I don't have to do it again? I actually had previous training in uh, stage fighting, uh, uh, stage combat, choreographing fights and things of that sort, so I was pretty familiar with grunts and efforts prior to having to voice them, so it came pretty easily for me. One of the things about it is just, it's so much fun when you do it and, and then you hear it back and it works and you just go, wow, that's exactly what that should sound like. I'm so grateful to do that, and again, the opportunity to go, ah, ah all of these crazy noises that actually work for the fight scenes that you're doing it's so much fun so take that it actually makes me feel like i'm gonna throw up it does <laughs> with video games it like it engages your diaphragm and so there's many been many a video game session where i thought i'm gonna be all over this microphone in a minute so i actually hate them i have anxiety anytime i need to do fighting sounds Ryan is always all over the microphone, yes. let's be honest. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> you can probably go on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
we complete? How did we get Tom Cruise? <laughs> he Johnny Bosch it. wasn't available. <laughs> <laughs> he was booked out. You know, speaking of Tom Cruise, have you ever noticed it's interesting? Nobody ever complains that he used the same voice in Mission Impossible as he did in Top Gun. What's up with that? Come on! That's actually very right. I just realized. Yeah, that. yeah. You know, only the face actors get that one. Don't get that. We get. But, but your voice is the same. It's a completely different character. Yeah, but you sounded the same. No, I didn't. Which leads me to my next question. Yes. What's the highest number of times you had to redo the same line to get it right? Oh boy. <laughs> it was. I actually. I was. I was working on this. This show. And uh, they had a new director, and then they had producers in there. And sometimes when you have producers in there and a new director, and there's a lot of like, what's going on here, guys? Um, and so there was, and it was probably the easiest thing to do. It's, it's, it's just like an, it's just, <laughs> that's all it was. It was like a breath, right? <laughs> and so I did that over 40 times. No, you did not. No joke, no joke. 40 and, times? Yeah, this is, I did it over 40 times. And I, and, and I was, after 40, like, and I started counting them. Because I was like, this is ridiculous. And I could see them arguing back and forth. And they're like, can you make that sharper? Can you soften it up? Can you make it sharper at the top? It was like, and I did it 40 times. And after about 40 something, I was like, guys, I don't think anybody's gonna watch this and go, holy cow, did you hear the way he did that? <laughs> it was terrible. No, and so, yeah. I mean, I know that, I mean. Yeah, that's I, pretty bad. <laughs> I, I I have to say probably as far as like dialogue goes, um, the one director who's made me do a take like multiple times would be Alex Von David and it was probably in Sword Art Online because <laughs> he's so particular. I mean, he's very open to like if you give him something that he wasn't expecting, but sometimes he just like, he's like, that's not quite it. Can we do that one more time? So maybe, you know, six or seven times. Which, I mean, that's a lot for one line. Six or seven times for one line. Because it's you start, after a while, it's like you kind of start to lose the, the oomph behind it after you've done it so many times. It just sort of loses its meaning, you know? You know, like when you say a word a couple of times and then it just starts sounding weird or you say your own name and you go, it sounds so strange. Like, that's exactly what you're talking about, right, Michelle? It's like, wait, is that Yeah, it's like, is that even right? <laughs> I gotta say the same thing with what Johnny was talking about with the efforts. There's some directors that I, I think honestly, they feel that they could do a better job themselves if they were only allowed to do it. And so they project but this is like, uh, no, it needs to be a little more, uh, okay, uh, no, that's a little too much. And, and you can go, like he was saying, you can be forever. And you're like, are you serious? Really? You think that little uh, is going to change somebody's opinion of the show and it's going to make a difference? No. So that's that's what most often happens is with, with sound effects that we're making, efforts that we're making, at least in my experience and Johnny's. We seem to get the dialogue pretty good, but we can't make any other sounds very well, apparently. So, we're working on it, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't... Usually... Uh, we never ask him to do anything other than once. He's so... Jesus, <laughs> just, just a couple times. Maybe I'm so you know, curious. Give me an ABC, yeah. Uh, no, we don't have time to do it that many times. I mean, unless they get particular, like, in Johnny's case. Um, but uh, the director will often have something in mind that they want to hear from you. So if you don't have that particular inflection, yes, that's when you'll get tripped up and it'll be over and over and over again. So you get what, what they're hearing in their heads. Well, uh, um, I've always found that the longer lines, usually we can get in one or two takes, it's those short ones that they want to get 36 different times. <laughs> I will. No, 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 the other one. I will. No, no, a little longer. I will. And, and Jacob Simone, who I love, is sometimes when he directs, he makes me do it so many times, I'm like, okay, now you're just messing with me. <laughs> because he'll do that, and it's funny. 
But so, it's always the shortest ones where you have to do it. It's not right yeah. now. It's yes. like the two, three word ones. But the long paragraphs, those are okay when you get a one or two takes. So it's very strange, but uh, it's fun anyway. Well, question for everyone. Is there any character that you wish your character interacted with more, like Ichigo? Like any other character as well? In this new arc, I wish my character interacted with anyone. <laughs> like, where did he go? To the bathroom? Where is he? It's been 12 episodes. For the lead villain in a show, Aizen doesn't have a lot of screen time. He needs more. He needs, he needs more, more screen time? Yes. Right? Yeah. I believe he agrees with you. Yeah, I'd actually like to see more eyes. I'd like to see more Grim Joe, yeah. you know, which I'm, I'm sure we're going to get. I hope so, right? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> this summer on Hulu. <laughs> yeah. Because Disney owns Hulu, therefore Eisen is officially a Disney villain. Oh. <laughs> okay, I see how. That's very, I'm that's I'm very Disney smart princess. style. <laughs> <laughs> but was it easy finding these character voices? Because... Some of you have been voice acting for years, and it varies from time to time. What made you like look at the character's picture and like, this is the voice for that character, besides the director, like, yeah, that's it. Like, what made you like, said, made that decision in your mind, like, I'm gonna go this direction with the voice? Well, you usually give it a, a little bit of uh, direction as far as uh, understanding the character and saying, this is his attitude, is this a little bit, or this is, this is, the kind of things that he does, so you have something in your mind well, overall as far as what you're trying to achieve with it, and then from there it's just whatever you feel would, would bring that out and make it happen, I think. And so, you know, all of us got lucky because we did what they were looking for and we're here now. The initial uh, copy that I received uh, only had two instructions on it. Uh, make him sound young and don't sound like the Japanese actor. That was a two thing. But they always put the script as one page. There's about three or four paragraphs of dialogue that you have to audition. And up in the old days, they used to have a, up in the right hand corner a little drawing of what he looked like. And I always thought that Renji looked like a young Jack Nicholson. He had those eyebrows and he was like, eh. So I just, I just kind of did a young Jack Nicholson. Look at that guy over there. What a jerk. I, you know, I, just, I just heard a young Jack. So we did that and they seemed to respond to it. It's funny, when I auditioned for Rukia, I didn't see any pictures. I didn't even know, like, they didn't tell us the name of the show, as far as I remember. Um, and I guess the, the one of the reasons why I booked the role is because I did sound very similar to the Japanese actress. Um, the Japanese client, uh, you know, that was one of their notes with me and why I, part of the reason why I got called back. So... Um, but as far as like vocal placement and her character, just where she's placed, you know, in my body just felt natural for her. I, um, I saw a couple episodes ahead of time. My drummer, like I had band at the time and we would, uh, rehearse and whatnot, but the bass player was always late. And so my drummer was just watching some anime and it happened to be Bleach. And so I was sitting there watching it with him. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, and so eventually I got the audition for that show. Did you know what you were auditioning for? As soon as I saw like his hair, you and I was like, oh, that's that, that's that show. So you saw his picture. Yeah, and I, 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 I saw there's a, you know, I saw like the first episode or whatever it was. Um, but the note for me was like, try to make him sound nicer. Not as, and he's like beating up some kids, you know, and I'm like, oh, how do I do that? Um, so I, I tried to soften him up, and then whenever it came to like yelling bankai, I just kind of did what felt right to me at that time. And then, um, and then I remember I got a callback, and the callback was like, he sounds too nice. And I was like, make up your mind. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyways, kind of like found a middle ground, I guess. Yeah, uh, the director, when, when I came into it, was uh, Wendy Lee, who was the voice director. And so when I came in, she actually showed me the scene where Ichigo and Grimjow, and Grimjow is just 
landing like a hundred punches on his face, just beating the crap out of him. And I saw that him just doing this maniacal laughter, and I really loved the Japanese performance on it. And what Wendy told me is she said, what I want him to sound like is I just want him to sound and just attitude over the top. And so I really just, that, that scene, I saw that scene and I was like, oh my God, I have to play this character. And so uh, that's really what drove me to just kind of give him, just take the attitude. I mean, Grim Zhao, out of, out of any character I've ever played, has more attitude than any character uh, that I've ever had the chance of. I gotta ask now, is there any similarities that you share with your characters now? Like, yes, I am also a badass. No. <laughs> <laughs> lots, lots of attitude. So much attitude. <laughs> Which is definitely an open question for everyone. Do, do you guys feel like you share any similarities with your character, like, personality-wise? Yeah, I, I also don't get enough screen time. <laughs> so, yeah. I also see dead people. <laughs> I love to look at beautiful things. <laughs> I, I feel like after doing the voice so long, it's just part of me. You know, it's like, it's less like a uh, character and more of just like, I just know this area. Like, it, I, I could feel it, you know? When you do a character yeah. long enough, it's just like, ah, oh, it's, it definitely it's becomes just me a right part now. Of you. you kind of put so much of yourself into it, anyways. Yeah. So then it's just like you're just stepping into this version of, you know, you playing pretend or something. Are you going for the mic? Yeah. yeah, I was actually going to reference Michelle, what Michelle said, and I was going to say, you, you think she's kidding. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> True story. <laughs> well, now I have to know, how does that work? Uh, I mean, it, it hasn't happened in a while, but... Um, I used to live out in Agora Hills, which is like Indian burial ground, and for like years, I mean, I, I grew up seeing ghosts and stuff, I've always seen ghosts all my life, um, but it was during the time when I, I booked the role of Rukia, it was really, it was like every day I was seeing something, a lot of times in my home, you know, uh, and that was happening pretty pretty regularly so yeah I know it's crazy it hasn't happened in a while it's kind of it's kind of shut off oh, okay. which I'm okay with yeah no yeah. there's a strong similarity there <laughs> let me see I probably got one more question I'm gonna open up to the wonderful people in the audience hey. how about the non-wonderful people do they get the opportunity to ask a question it's here for all us non-wonderful people. Huzzah! Are there any fun projects that you guys are working on that you can tell us about? Yeah, Bleach. <laughs> There's this show that's coming, that's out, and it's going to have another like second season. It's called Bleach. Blood War. Yeah. Blood yeah. War. There's a, there's a project called NDA, which stands for Non-Disclosure Agreement. <laughs> I think we're all on that. Uh, we're all, uh, yes. we're all yeah. actually yeah. on yes. that. Yeah. The ones you can talk about. That's funny, I thought NDA stood, stood for No Discussion, Asswipe. <laughs> <laughs> that could work. <laughs> well, with that in mind, I'll now open up to you guys. I'm gonna run the mic around, because I don't think I have a helper like I had for myself, so. Maybe I can set the mic up and have everyone form a line on the left or right side. Which way you guys want? Well, all I know is the computer oh, serves I'm going to him. He's, he's, he's trying to signal us that the video has stopped. Yeah, right. I'm so sorry. I'm on a tape. I need a battery. New battery. <laughs> Somebody send him a microphone or what's going on? It's going. Okay. It's going. What is this thing you call tape? Microphone. Walking in. Hello! So, I actually have to go off tangent, I know this is a Bleach panel, but Johnny, can you talk about returning for Power Rangers once and always, and did you wish you more to the special? 
Uh, well, it was uh, fun. It was great to go back. Um, yeah, just a cameo. Um, it would have been awesome to morph, but this is kind of like... So, like, Netflix basically gave Hasbro a little bit of money to be able to do this thing, you know? If they gave them more money, I'm sure they would have brought more people. They would have made it even bigger. Uh, but I think what they did was was right. They, you know, they gave even our characters, Karen and I, a little bit of, you know, uh, a new history, I guess. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Netflix didn't know that people still watch Power Rangers, you know. So when it became like the most anticipated show, I think they were like, wait a second. There's something here. And so, who knows? You know, maybe there's a chance for them to do a whole retro race. Rangers season, but you know, awesome. of course it would have been great. I mean, I, I did, of course, email. I was like, do I get to fight at least? Um, but uh, but I, I'm I was happy to be there. I thought what they did was really cool. I, it's probably one of my favorite like uh, retro Ranger whatever reunion uh, shows for Power Rangers. Um, I thought they did a good job, and it felt like the old series, you know. Um, and I thought they did justice for you know. Walter's character as well as, you know, David's. And I thought uh, tributes to the people that we lost, I thought were really, really sweet. It was a very touching, you know, heartfelt uh, episode or series. So it was, it was cool. I dug it. I got no complaints, really. Yeah, me too, John. I love the special too. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name's Ron. Uh, I want to say thank you first and foremost for doing this city. Um, my generation of anime fans, I think, super grew up with all your voices. I think for a lot of us, Bleach is one of our first, like, animes. I remember watching on Tsunami and stuff. Uh, Bleach is also regarded as the, one of the big three. So, um, it's safe to say that you guys changed a lot of people's lives. I wanted to ask if you guys have any cool anecdotes or experiences where you kind of realized, like, the cultural magnitude that Bleach has for, like, a bunch of us weebs. Considering that you guys are like, I don't know, you guys are like kind of like top tier, like, yo, know, like I grew up with this. I think a lot of people can agree with that. I think. Yeah. So, I just wonder if you guys have any cool experiences being like, wow, you're like, I'm a part of the cast of the big three anime, and like this is pretty sick. Well, what would you say are the other two? Naruto and One Piece, undeniable. I will fight anyone about. It. <laughs> I, 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 I think there are some people up on this panel that also worked on Naruto. You know, oh, so. Yeah. So maybe you should ask how it feels to be in two thirds a little bit. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> or for those of us who may have had a short run in One Piece as well. Well, see, that's three for three. That's big odds. <laughs> Neil is the superstar. Who <laughs> <laughs> Neil? I was at San Diego Comic Con one year with my good friend Dave from South Dakota and his son, who's my godson, Sean, who was about six or seven at the time. And the trading card company that handled all the bleach cards had a, had a booth there. And Sean went over and said, oh, I'm interested in the bleach cards. I'm like, yeah, yeah, kid, okay, whatever. He says, my, un my uncle is Renji. What? Yeah, he's right over there. Oh, hey, kid, come on and sit down. Hey, he wants some free cards. We got this one, we got this one. And so I realized, oh my gosh, my godson is getting all sorts of free attention that he wouldn't ordinarily have got had his Godfather not been the voice of Renji. So they were very nice, of course. But uh, that, that was the first moment I realized, hey, uh, this is pretty cool. That people actually respect this show, they respect the characters, and the voice actors behind the characters. And I'm like, oh, this, this is going to be a fun ride. So I'm, I'm glad it's back. I love that so much time has passed. I'm glad it came back. We're all glad to be back. And thank God we're all still alive. We're all still in good health. We're all still in good voice. And we get to do this show for you. So yes. thank you. It's also such a, such a cool thing because when Bleach started, you know, in the time of covered, wa covered wagons and rotary phones and no computers, so this has been like a, a, a slow roll of fandom. You often don't realize the impact of a show until years later conventions become more prevalent and people have, you know, the, the fan base and the internet and stuff like that. So I didn't really realize it was such a big deal until a few years ago. I don't know if you guys share that experience. I mean, honestly, for me, I, I've... I knew it was a big deal going, you know, through the first arc, but Anime Expo last year was the Bleach panel and the announcement for Thousand Year Blood War was insane. There were like 4,000 people in the room. It was crazy. And at that moment, you had recorded video. Johnny was not able to attend. 
Um, at that moment, I was like, oh man, this show is coming back and it's coming back big, like big. I, I, I just feel like for me, it's just seeing like people in cosplay for the characters. Yeah, you know, I just, have a white Rukia that, here you know? today. You got more, right? Man, <laughs> you know, man, you got, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like when you see that, then it's like, well, this has made some impact. You know, huge. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited that it's back because I did feel like it left off in a strange place, and I knew there's so much more in the manga, and so I'm just excited that we're going to get to explore those really cool things that you guys probably are already familiar with. Yeah, I finally get my bankai. <laughs> I think the first time I realized how big this show was was when the Yamamoto ab workout was number one on Amazon. <laughs> uh, that, Neil, is one of the things, by the way, you do share with your characters. Neil and uh, Yamamoto, they both have great abs. So, uh, show them, Neil. Liar! <laughs> it's the white hair. That's the only thing we share in common. <laughs> <laughs> Touche! <laughs> Actually, first I wanted to say uh, to Jameson, I met him yesterday and found out that he does the recordings for Housing Long Beach. Oh. Um, I looked at my graduation video and he did not announce my name. So oh, I sorry. It, but that's okay. It's cool to know that. Um, I wanted to know if everyone can do the Don Kenoji lap. If everyone can do what? Don Kenoji. <laughs> yeah. I, I, guess the, I guess the answer to your question is no. no. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. Wait. Hold on a sec. Wait, wait. You should come up here and tell Jameson your name so you can say it out loud. Yes. Okay. Come, come up. Come up here. Come up here. Yes. Tell, tell Jameson your name so we can make your life complete. She's got her phone ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nicole Hakeem. <laughs> right hand shake, left hand degree. Congratulations. Thank you. There we go. Yay. Justice. Give it up for Jameson Price, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We'll be here for a few more hours. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Ashley. Hi. Um, my question is, if there was any other character you guys could have voiced in Bleach, who would it be and why? Kind of open it for anybody. Obviously, Ichigo. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I think I would probably Grimja or uh, Renji, I think. How about we trade for the next couple episodes, <laughs> see if anybody notices. <laughs> I wanted awesome. to in the original DVD, I asked them, I, I made a request, I was like, when they were releasing the first CD, DVD, I asked, could I do a thing where I just voice everyone's characters? <laughs> and so it's like on the DVD, and then they thought about it, they sent that request, and, and then it came back, no. they're like, no. <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been funny. Now you guys know what emails to write to Viz. <laughs> Welcome Ichigo to Boston. Ichigo as everyone. <laughs> no, but there's already a show called Boss. Yeah, this is not going to work. I don't know. I think I've got the coolest character in the show, so I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm I, pretty happy with my character, too. 
Although I wouldn't mind voicing Ichigo because then I'd have like 11 Funko Pops. <laughs> Very true. I think Yucky seems a little lonely sometimes, a little introspective. So maybe Kenpachi would be a lot of fun because there's always been somebody to talk to in his back. You know, hey, how you doing? I, I think that would be a lot of fun. David Lodge does an awesome job. Yeah. I always uh, wanted, I, I, I loved Ukiura. If I could have uh, voiced Ukiura, that would have been pretty cool. And of course Ichigo. But Ukiura just because he's so emo. <laughs> Is that Steve, Steve Prince? No, Tony, uh, Tony oh, Alvaro. Tony Alvaro, okay. Oh, Steve Prince's character is pretty emo too. Udiu. <laughs> Udiu, yeah. Super emo. Oh, Thanks, Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Michael. Um, actually, thank you all for just being a part of my childhood. Like, I like enjoy watching Bleach like every time I could when I was like ten to like my twenties. Um, Thanks for making us feel old. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. I mean, we're, we're getting there too. So, um, I guess this question more towards Johnny, but. Whatever Ichigo was. Which one? Ah. <laughs> I mean, if y'all want to answer, go ahead. <laughs> um, whenever it came to like Ichigo going to his inner world, uh, talking to his hollow self or Sangetsu, um, was it hard to differentiate between Ichigo and his inner hollow for like voicing, like recording his voice wise? You know, I I didn't even know I was gonna voice him. It was like there, Wendy was directing. And I saw in the uh, script that it said White Ichigo. And so I was like, I was like, oh, who's doing that one? And she was like, you are. And so I thought in my head, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm going to sound like myself talking to myself. Um, but then with Ichigo, he's kind of like rough and earthy. And he's like, he, you know, he's just like talking instead of talking. So I'm like, oh, this is more of an ING kind of guy. And I'll pitch him up a little bit. So I just kind of like quickly found, which I'm sure we've all been in that boat, where you like, quickly like, oh, I get another character in this, and so you just find a way to make them separate. And then, um, the other, he's just a different character too, you know? He more talks up here, you know? And there's, it gets, it's, he's a little, almost like a, like the Joker, kind of psychotic or a little bit. So you just kind of like, once you find this place, then you go, oh, this is kind of fun. And then you, you just start swimming in it and see where it kind of takes you, you know? It's very interesting, because like, I was like, when you first found out, I was like, did you just do like this, this impromptu, or like, you just like, oh man, I gotta like, think of something like real quick. I was like, yeah, so, I, was, I was winging it. <laughs> <laughs> winging it. Thank you so much. I was like very curious to have my whole time. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie. Uh, also, thanking you guys uh, for doing this panel. It's been so long since we've had like a beach VA panel. Like, it's, um, I'm starstruck by all of you. Uh, my question is kind of for all of you, but I guess specifically for you know Johnny and Michelle as well. Um, is there any dialogue or scene that really stuck with you throughout the like, each series that like you found like most like I don't know, impactful? Well, I still love the first episode and the dialogue between us. I mean, I went back and watched like the first few episodes, and it's just funny, like our relationship, and I just like establishing the banter between us and between like the whole our, our gang basically that to me is really stuck Rukia why do your drawings suck so bad <laughs> I do I, I like that yeah it's, it's fun stuff it's in fun there it's fun stuff you know um, I don't know why but that's what I think of whenever I think of like the relationship with Rukia that pretty uh, much sums it up <laughs> Her terrible bunny drawings. And then I like beat you up. Exactly. <laughs> you just yeah. made my, my YouTube very happy. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of really cool moments in there, though. You know, like the you getting the sword is like, give me that sword, Soul Reaper, you know? And then taking that in and just becoming a substitute Soul Reaper. There's a lot of cool things in there. Um, yeah. And then this was so long ago, too. So I know, I know, yeah. it really was. But, I mean, watching the, watching the episodes again, it all kind of like came back, you know? I was like, oh my God, so good. 
It's so good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it's super fun. I, I was going to say something. Um, like, we don't, you know, in reference sort of in the last question, like, we don't get the script ahead of time. You know, it's not like they send us a script and we get to go, like, you know, get off book. We memorize our lines. There's none of that. It's like you show up just and it's cold reading. You know, it's like you just, you just have to do it. So everybody up here is a professional at this voiceover thing. You know, uh, we have to be able to be on instantly. So, yeah, I, I joke and say I was just winging it. But it's like we all have, like, the ability to just be a character and start acting instantly without even ha knowing. We just ask questions to directors, like, who am I? Where am I coming from? Where am I going? Where am I going to end up? And then, then you instantly kind of figure out that path, you know, that arc. Like, what am I going to do with my voice? And you just, like, you just do it. You take it on and you do it. These are... I'm surrounded by professionals. I think the reason why Bleach is so good is because of the other people that are around. You know, it's great, great cast. But the animation right now is super awesome. Oh my God. So good. All right. Uh, my name is Octavian. I just want to say thank you guys for all coming out today. Uh, specifically, I want to thank Johnny. You voice one of my favorite characters ever since I was a little child. Gosh, Stampede. Oh, uh, thanks. Best characters ever. Thanks. But, uh, I did want to ask you a question. How hard was it for you to mimic the same voice and match the same tones after taking like a 20 year break from match or taking a six year break from each other? I know it's a little bit easier for that character because you have video games and whatnot, but coming back after a long time, how hard is it to get back into that? Uh, kind of like what I said before, Ichigo is just someone I could just get into, you know? Every weekend I'm shouting Bankai or Getsuka Tensho, you know? So I haven't really lost who he was, and I remember it, you know? He's just a part of me. Um, because I basically, he just became, like, I just put whoever I am into that character. So he's not super different, you know? Other than his world is obviously different. So it wasn't too drastically different for me, or difficult. Um, the only thing I thought about and consciously tried to do was like, it's been a long time and they've been fighting hollows this entire time. So he's like a pro at this kind of thing, you know? And so I, I, my attitude was a little different in, in going into it. And so, and so that maybe affected the read a little bit and, and uh, it might've been a little gruffer because of that, you know, I'm trying to make him like, he's been doing this for a while, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy when you say 20 years. I know. Man. Wow. <laughs> We're all going to stand up from here like... <laughs> oh, my back. <laughs> I'm Danny, and big question for all the Johnny and Bush, Jimmy, James, and Tom Cruise, and I don't know what Kyle says, but Kyle. Oh, yeah, I put Johnny Young Bosk. <laughs> yeah. I love Johnny also. Uh, so it's a question for all of you. What is the one thing that you did not expect to happen in the Thousand Year Blood War anime that just, whether it was like watching the anime or just reading the script, what threw you completely off guard? I don't want to spoil it for how many of you have not seen it yet? Oops. For, I'll just say, like, I mean, there's a lot of death. <laughs> um, death. Yeah, death. Yeah. In episode seven, I, I actually there, there's a lot more blood too. It's than very I recall. gory. I feel like can I just can I say one thing, even though I'm not a say, part of this question. I feel like the new arc is definitely not for kids. Like the first arc was is i think you know you can get away with showing it to your youngins but this arc is really very adult <laughs> yeah very gory it's like remember all the characters you love <laughs> bye bye <laughs> <laughs> bye bye uh yeah it was that's cool episode seven though was i mean episode seven i locked in i was like oh this is it's hard, but, you know, it hurts a little bit, but it was like, oh, this is good. I can't wait to see where this is going to go, you know? I was definitely shocked with flashback scenes with Yamamoto. I mean, 
we went all, the whole show and never saw him young, and all of a sudden it was like, wait, what? Okay. So that was that was kind of fun. Plus, he had a different color hair. I got to play dark hair. Yeah. Acting. Who's in the most episodes? <laughs> just, try, just try to get in there. Just put me in, coach. Looking for a balance. I vote for Soul Reaper. They have the coolest outfits. Yeah, they make those robes look good. Yeah, I'd go with Soul Reaper as well. Me too. Shinigami. Yes. I'll say Soul Reaper because it sounds like a great metal band. <laughs> Soul Reaper, yeah! <laughs> I totally rock out. I think I'm calling Sonic a great metal band. Is that from Spade? Yes. Is there a Skull Rapper? <laughs> Soul Rapper. Okay, so first off, going back to the bunny drawings, I want to thank Michelle for her beautiful drawing yesterday. You did so good. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Johnny. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and then my question is, basically, all the characters you voice in Bleach, right? Do you think that your character could take on any of your more powerful characters? Like, for example, David, do you think, like, Grim Jow could take on Nanami? That's a great question. Um, I do think that Grim Jow could take on uh, Nanami because he's just so fearless. What about Overtime, though? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm pro Grim Jow, so. <laughs> Amen, sister. I've been to Grim Jow, too. I would say probably Grim Jow. Yeah. Take your take. are always way much more fun to play. While I'd love to be Batman, I love the Riddler, his intellectual superior. <laughs> the villains will always be much more fun to play. I agree, but beyond that, it's just a chance to be a little crazy and also to not have a filter about, oh, that's rude, I shouldn't say that. But to just be able to just be purely evil and do what you want to do without caring about any repercussions and also trying to be sneaky at times about it, and be manipulative, all things that we may be capable of doing and hopefully don't do all the time. But in the, within these roles is that opportunity to get that out of your system as a villain. So I find it very therapeutic and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Villains have more fun. Yep. Villains aren't evil, they're just misunderstood. Right. <laughs> I think it just kind of... Hello everyone, I'm your thousand Let's open the door higher, shall we? <laughs> yes, let's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyhow, uh, ever since the thousand year of blood was uh, announced, how do you guys feel? <laughs> I was happy. Yeah. I was happy to hear, you know, I was like, wow. But before, like, I, I did ask, like, well, what does that mean, thousand-year blood war? Like, I didn't know what that meant. Like, is it going to go on for a thousand years? Does it go on for a thousand years? Or is it a war that's been going on for a thousand years? Yes. Yeah. Is that the answer? You don't know for sure. Well, I don't know I'm either. Sure 
Does that mean Did you, you read the manga? No. Did you? I read some of it. Well, Nanny and your boo-boos. <laughs> Anybody else on the panel when it was announced feel a little skeptical? Like, oh, they're going to recast with celebrities. Or like oh, a, uh, definitely. They're not going to call yeah, me. Really. But, Is it going to text? That's yeah, the same yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yes. Well, definitely. I'll wait for the phone call, but I'm a little yeah. skeptical. Yeah, for sure. yeah, for sure. There's a lot of that going on now, and it's absurd. And thanks to you guys who wrote the emails and said, we want the originals back. So thank you. <laughs> Very much. Hey, Mark. Hi there. Hey. Um, thank you for being my childhood. Johnny, especially you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> it's more than time, bro. Forever. And I hey. you too. You were the frog. <laughs> the frog. It's just yeah. one. Yeah. But I have um, nothing to say. Go back to the frog. So. Uh, uh, all right. So how did it feel for you guys to do the voice acting in the live action version? I was not invited. Wait, can yeah, you, that was kind of sad. Can was you tell that. me about this thing that none of us have heard of? Really? Yeah, I'd love to know about this thing that we allegedly worked on yeah, that we I, didn't work on. I've heard of 2018, but that's as far as it goes so far. Really? That's bad. It was Johnny who was on that, and I kind of wanted to say, how, how did it feel? Voice over Mr. Borza himself. I didn't think about that at all. Um, and I didn't know that anybody yeah. knew was coming back or what. I just got a call that was like, hey, there's a live action Bleach. And I was like, oh, cool. Um, live action is always a little strange, yeah. you yeah. know? Because it's like, how do I make this sound natural, you know? And so you think about just trying to make it not sound. You, 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 I guess you just let yourself mumble a little bit or you just kind of be a little more free with your words or, or how you speak. Um, and you're not thinking about like being super clear and enunciating. Anyways, so I thought more about that and try to make it sound natural. Um, and I didn't find out until afterwards that I was like, wait a second. It's not the same people that are here. It's like, if, and I, I felt like I was there. I don't know if anybody else was in there. Well, I, I was, no, back. I was not at, but in defense of Netflix, I was very upset at first, but I understand now why they did that. And it didn't have anything to do with like us being good actors or not. They just, the actors that were chosen for the live action skewed younger than maybe what the anime did. So they wanted to be true to what we were seeing on screen. And that's why, um, I mean, it is what it is. Young it up, baby. Thank you for answering that question. Sure. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hugo. Uh, I was wondering what are each of your favorite scenes or remarks from the uh, beach? <laughs> the fight with Charlotte. Saving Rukia from certain death. I like that whole part. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I like the first 60. I mean, that got me into it. Like, is he going to save Rukia? I like a lot of the, I like a lot of the fights, to be honest. I like the Grimjaw fight, you know. I like a lot of the Aizen stuff. Uh, Byakuya was really cool. That was fun. Um, I don't know. I, for me, it's just, I just enjoy it. I just have a good time. I know there, I felt like a, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, for me, definitely, it was the, the, the fight in Wake of Mundo uh, with, uh, with Ichigo. Uh, I had an absolute blast recording that one. So much fun. Great, great, great scene. I think uh, the one that threw me off was, like, it was very intense uh, art, and it was a by bikini singing at the beach. I was thoroughly confused because I was so serious. I was watching all the bullshit. <laughs> I just love seeing all the characters just relax for once and not have to stress the voice 
this is what. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know along the same lines of favorites. Um, what was everyone's favorite line that they got to play or the most influential to you? I will not let them kill you, Rukia. I love that. Remember, she was going to be executed. Anybody? Anybody? Anyone? Okay. All right. I think my first, like, the actual opening of the show, um, when we see Rukia, like her silhouette, she's jumping from building to building. And it sort of sets the tone, I think, for the show. Um, that that would be my favorite for her so far, but that's not to say that there won't be a new favorite coming with this, you know, with the new arc. Uh, for me, it would be a lot of people warned me through social media about Thousand Year Blood War. They'd write me notes. You're going to have to say that word. You're going to have to say the word. You're going to have to say it. And then I saw it on the script and I took a picture and posted it on Instagram. But the word was Because when you gotta work that shit out, you remember it. I have to say, because Neil had maybe the longest word to, and hardest to say, I'm on the opposite side of that scale where I have one word myself that I didn't realize how powerful it might be or how much of a response it might get until I was sitting in the audience at the screening of one of the Bleach movies and the Akiyus said the word and the crowd burst into applause and I was so stunned by that. I just had this giant grin on my face going, whoa! And it was as simple as saying, scatter. Just that. And it was amazing. I don't know the episode, but it's the fight with Charlotte. The best. I like the, uh, the reveal when Eisen, you find out he's not such a good guy. It's like a whoa. Uh, I like when, uh, when Rim Chow, uh, he uh, gets in his fight with Tosin. Episode 373. That's my flight, I gotta go. so much. I think we're going to head back to our tables, but we appreciate you guys watching the show. Really, uh, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Thank, Thank you. you. Make it good for